Cast member of Street Outlaws, that's a Discovery TV show, died in a crash near APEC. Back in August 2022, we mourn the death of Ryan Fellows, one of the drivers on Street Outlaws. Even though he's dead, his surviving family members have taken matters into their own hands. They're suing Warner Brothers and Discovery in a lawsuit that might change Street Outlaws forever. If you missed the news, we will have a brief recap or you can watch our summary here. Again, this video will be less quippy due to the subject. Also, if you are ever in legal trouble, please do the right thing and see a lawyer instead of going to YouTube or r slash legal advice for help. Tuna No Crust is not the place for legal advice. It's the place that serves you the hottest car TV show celebrity news. Let's get the basics out of the way. Street Outlaws began as a show on Discovery Channel in 2013. The premise is simple. People conduct quasi-legal car races, usually in the dead of night, on public stretches of road. There are typically large sums of cash on the line. But mostly, people watch Street Outlaws for fast races, cool cars, and the personality of the racers. It's important to note here that street racing is technically illegal. It's a miracle that these popular outlaws make money on an official television network. But they manage, and we made a video on how they do it. Ryan Fellows was one of the racers on Street Outlaws Fastest in America. He wasn't that big a name, but people knew his face. Overall, he had a decent reputation. His main appearance was in a 2021 episode when he brought a Lamborghini Huracan to a street race. Notably, the Lambo also crashed, but Fellows managed to get it back under control. On the morning of August 8, 2022, Ryan Fellows died in a race around the Harry Allen Generating Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. His highly modified gold Nissan 240Z crashed, rolled over, and burst into flames, killing him. He had almost reached the finish line before losing everything. The tweet about the incident is, well, it sounded corporate, and most of the other statements have not sounded much better. The race itself was also a little sketchy. According to KSNV, Warner had not authorized a film permit but had the street closed for filming regardless. It's a little suspicious, but not enough to affect the lawsuit. With his death looking like an honest mistake, it'll be hard to make a solid case against Warner Brothers. Without dipping into legalese, the reason Fellow's family is suing goes a little beyond the guy himself. They are motivated by the deceased family member, but the premise dives deeper. As TMZ puts it, In the docks, Ryan's family says the roadway where he crashed was only 12 feet wide instead of the industry standard of 30 feet. They also say the sides of the road featured broken asphalt and gravel shoulders with sheer drop-offs, instead of the industry standard concrete barriers. What this means is that the track Fellows was on was not adequately prepared, resulting in his death. We'll pick this line apart later. There's some language that a lawyer would take issue with. The family also wishes to push things further, implying that the premise of profiting from street racing is enough to lend WBD in hot water. And we're going to look at why they might or might not have a case. Let's start with a basic idea. Street racing is dangerous. We've done videos on some injuries on Street Outlaws before. Check them out when you're done with this one. Everyone is aware not only that street racing isn't quite legal, but that it is dangerous regardless of the track conditions. Usually the Outlaws are prepared to handle a few accidents. At the time of his death, Ryan Fellows was racing for Fastest in America. The title is exactly what it says it is. Eight of the fastest street racing teams in America competed in Memphis, Tennessee for $100,000 and the honor of officially being the fastest in the nation. No Prep Kings is a different animal. Usually for street racing, a track is prepared to remove debris, roadkill, shrapnel, and other hazards. The road may also be coated with chemicals such as PJ1 track bite to help the car's tires grip the road. A no prep race does not have any of these precautions in place. But Ryan Fellows was not racing for no prep kings, he was racing on Fastest in America. While we couldn't find if Fastest in America preps its roads, it's a big oversight if they do not, and that could be a case for a lawsuit. There are a lot of things we don't know though. 
Let's assume the family is right for a moment and that the track of fastest in America had not been properly prepped. What was the source of that information? Where did they get the standards? How did they know multiple cars had flipped over? Does the group heading the street races have any standards? The lawyers should probably show their sources. One likely source is the National Hot Rod Association. This association sets the standards for drag racing. But after looking at some of their requirements, it's clear that the drivers on street outlaws don't follow all of them. They have an anti-establishment attitude that adds to their appeal. This escalated in 2015. The NHRA sent several street members of street outlaws threatening letters. Unless they started following proper practices, they would get their licenses revoked. Most of them didn't care, but the current lawsuit has reignited the debate over whether Discovery should be doing this at all. Quote Gino Effler, a PR representative of the NHRA at the time. The heart of the matter is that we don't promote street racing in any form in any way. They have reasons to want street outlaws off the airwaves forever. If the NHRA gets involved again, there is a chance we might lose street outlaws for good or worse. It would suck if everybody we've come to know and love wound up behind bars. We also don't know the exact details of Fellow's contract. All street racers acknowledge that their sport is dangerous. Discovery gets permits for their races. There might have been fine print determining what people can or can't sue over. Regardless, the tenuous legality might throw a wrinkle into the family's lawsuit. Or it might make the case stronger. Nobody knows. This is not the show's first lawsuit either. NHRA aside, the show itself got sued by a Memphis couple. Chad and Jenny Larkin were invited by Jonathan J.J. DeBoss to participate in a Street Outlaws Memphis race in 2017. The buy-in was $1,000 and the winner got the entire pot at the end. Seems pretty normal so far. But then, the showrunners got involved. The results were not pretty, according to Memphis News Channel 3. The men allegedly kicked Larkin in the head and body, causing multiple injuries, including a torn meniscus, a torn hamstring, and a torn thigh muscle. He also reportedly was left with a bulging disc in his back, a chipped tooth, busted lips, and a black eye and a swollen face and shoulder. Yep, that's worth a lawsuit roughly a year later. Never mind that, his wife got roughed up too. Both the racers and the producers are at fault, but the staff probably had the lion's share of responsibility. If the producers told the Memphis couple to start something and they got punched, the actor should be punished. But at the same time, it's not wise to tell someone to start drama and expect no results. The producers' plan for friction on set works a little too well. The Warner Brothers Discovery brand itself is also under fire from other directors. David Zaslav took over WBD roughly a year ago. Since then, he has cut anything that isn't immediately profitable, even movies that were almost complete. The DC Cinematic Universe is in limbo. Countless people are upset that entire shows have been cut from HBO Max. If you have a favorite Warner Brothers show, Zaslav has probably done something with it. He believes the company's strength is its IP. Whether you dislike them for canceled movies or other PR mishaps, there are reasons not to like HBO Max, Zaslav, and anyone else behind the scenes of your favorite car shows. They have angered a lot of people due to a change in management. But this lawsuit might not be Zaslav's fault. He will, however, be the one reacting to it. It's a little hard to determine what might happen to street outlaws due to this lawsuit. It doesn't help that street racing is illegal. Any other rules would be set by the community. But the NHRA wants them gone. The network might cut them if they aren't profitable, and things do not look good overall. Zaslav, if you're watching this, please don't cut street outlaws from your max offerings. So, what's your verdict? Does Fellows Family have a case against WBD? Will the NHRA intervene due to past issues? Or do you think Ryan Fellows knew what he was signing up for and accepted the risk to his own life in a legally binding contract, so any lawsuit might fall flat? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. We'll see you next time.